everyone and welcome to another video. Today's video is actually going to be a little bit different of a video. It's not necessarily a review, but it's more of an explanation for why I do things the way that I do. Specifically, we're actually going to be talking about Parfums Vintage and their Aventus fragrances or the, friend, the Aventus clones, if you will. Uh, and I think it's important just because it kind of undercurrents, it's an undercurrent for the way that I review, the way that I look at things and, and, and an explanation so people better understand kind of where I'm coming from. Uh, now, the reason I'm actually putting this video out is because I've actually received a couple comments specifically from people who are essentially saying that I don't understand Parfums Vintage, the Aventus clones, uh, that I'm a fragrance elitist, and they're not necessarily bad comments. I don't want people to think that they're flame comments. Uh, but generally, uh, with specific comments, I like to let people, you know, just say their piece, uh, let it go, and just kind of, uh, you know, everyone's entitled to their own opinion is what I think. However, if the opinion kind of is prevailing and I've noticed it come up a couple times, sometimes I like to explain why I feel the way that I do and I think the way that I do so people are better understanding of, you know, my thoughts and where I'm coming from. So that's really the purpose of this video, all right? So before I begin, let me go ahead and put a really quick disclaimer. I don't hate any company. I don't hate Parfums Vintage. I don't have any dislike for them at all. Uh, in fact, quite the opposite, I actually hold a lot of respect for them for two reasons. One, some of the fragrances that they put out are actually pretty freaking good. Uh, Emerald Isle, which is a clone of Green Irish Tweed, is really good. It's j almost just as good as the original Green Irish Tweed from the House of Creed. Uh, whereas Rush of Unicorns, in my opinion, is a better fragrance than Millicent Imperial from Creed, the fragrance that it's trying to uh, clone, if you will. Uh, and I've reflected and said as much in my reviews for that. So this is not coming from a place of hate. There are a lot of things that this company does right, uh, and I feel that they should be praised for. Another thing that I think that they should be praised for is the way that they've responded to my reviews. They have never ever, uh, you know, seen a negative review that I've had about one of their fragrances and been like, okay, we're going to stop sending him fragrances. For those of you know, who don't know, they actually send me a lot of fragrances free to go ahead and review. So that's what I do. And despite the fact that some Sometimes I will give their fragrances bad ratings. They still continue to send me fragrances to review uh, and appreciate the impartiality that I have. So this is not coming from a place of hate. I do like the company uh, and the way that they kind of operate. So understand that I'm just trying to be objective here, okay? So I wanted to take the time to go ahead and set a baseline so everyone is on the same page. Uh, and for that baseline, we're going to go ahead and define uh, what is essentially three different things. We're going to go ahead and define what a batch is. We're going to define what a reformulation is. And then, uh, ter you know, tertiary kind of off that new fragrances, if you will, uh, for that or a flanker or whatever you want to call it. All right. So let's go ahead and just start with the batches. So let's start for batches with a quick explanation of what batches are and how they kind of work, right? Uh, so batches are essentially labels that fragrances give uh, vats uh, of their particular fragrance, right? Of when it was actually created. So for example, I'm gonna go ahead and use an example. We're gonna start with a fragrance that I'm gonna go ahead and create called olive oil. Now it consists of two parts, or sorry, uh, equal parts, extra virgin olive oil, equal parts, uh, light olive oil, right? I pour them all into a huge vat and I get, you know, my fragrance called olive oil, right? I then from that vat, you know, pour them into bottles and I have, you know, a whole bunch of different fragrances of olive oil. And that vat is actually batch A, right? So I stamp it. Okay. This batch A was made on this date. Uh, and it consists of, you know, equal parts, olive oil, equal parts, light olive oil, and we're good to go. I ship it out we're good, right? That is fragrance olive oil. It's sent out. Now, let's say, uh, you know, a couple months down the line, year down the line, uh, you know, my either suppliers or the stores, they come back to me and they're like, whoa, this fragrance is selling out. We need more of it, right? So I'm like, cool, not a problem. I take these same two bottles, pour it back in, pour it into that huge vat, mix it up again, you know, make the bottles and distribute it. That is batch B. It has a new date on it and it is different from batch A. How is it different from batch A? Well, one, these two bottles, the, uh, these ingredients that created the fragrance, they're a little bit older, right? Time has passed, uh, they're not exactly the same, and as time passes, ingredients tend to degrade. Uh, the, the rate that they degrade at really depends on what you're actually using. For natural ingredients, generally it's quicker than uh, you know synthetic ingredients, but either way, uh, they degrade if they've come from the same bottle, right? So time, 
is the difference really between B and A. But all, everything else is really the same. Now you could technically go in and say, well, the vat that I use is different, things of that nature. And yeah, that's all true, the equipment, but you know, neither here nor there, time is different. So I ship that out. Batch B is now on the market. It's still the same fragrance, olive oil, but batch B is there, right? So it's out and you know, some people may be able to smell the difference, other people might not. I mean, it's essentially the same ingredients. Most people won't, right? Cool, everything's done. Time passes, another year has gone by or whatever time period, the suppliers come back, they're like, hey man, this thing is still flying off the shelves. We need more of it, all right? We say, okay, cool, I'm gonna go ahead and create it. I go to mix it and I realize, wait a second, I don't have any more extra virgin olive oil, right? Let me go back to my supplier and get more, right? Uh, so they come back, they give me this, you know, olive oil, and it's not the same bottle. It's not coming from the same, you know, obviously it's uh, a different bottle. Uh, it's, it's, even though it's the same product, it's a different bottle, right? So I then use that, mix it up, and, you know, put it out. That is batch C, right? Now, the difference between that batch, obviously more time has passed. This is a little bit older. This is now newer, and it's a different bottle. So that's a different formula, or that's a different batch as well, right? Time passes, same thing happens. This time, I go back, let's see, let's say this is out again. I'm like, oh man, it's out again. I need more of it. So this time the supplier is like, okay, sorry, we don't have this exact one, but we have an olive oil that is very similar. We've got this olive oil. It's the same thing, um, extra light, or sorry, whatever. Uh, it's, it's this olive oil, it's the same thing, but you know, it's slightly different brand. Maybe it came from a different vineyard and you mix it up. So I'm like, okay, cool, I've got it. I go ahead, pour it in, mix it up. I've got the new fragrance. Now it's even more different than the first formulation. So you can see over time, time comes into play. You might have a difference in, slight difference in ingredients, even though it's the same part. All of those go into batches. And one of the reasons that they have batch numbers is for quality assurance, right? You wanna know uh, if you have a problem with a particular batch, you can always say, hey man, uh, a store can always say, hey man, to the perfumer, this batch uh, or this particular fragrance has a problem with it. And you go, okay, well, let's see what happened. You trace it back to the batch, learn when it was concocted and all that good stuff. And it also provides kind of like a shelf life, if you will, for fragrances where you, you might know that this fragrance that you got from lot, lot A was concocted like four years ago or something like that. So you know that it's been sitting on the shelf or some shelves for four years. Things of that nature go into batch differences. All right, so that's batches in a nutshell. Now let's go ahead and move on to reformulations, right? Let's take those same batch scenarios. You know, if you've got your two fragrances uh, or uh, you've got your fragrance and it's mixed with these two things, uh, I go ahead and pour it in, you know, same, same difference, comes back and I need more of the product, right? So we say, okay, what do we do? Now, maybe a mandate from the company has come down. Maybe our fragrance isn't selling as well, right? We wanna cut costs. We wanna make it a little bit more profitable, right? So instead, what we do is we say, okay, maybe we can replace this with something else. Let's go ahead and replace it with canola oil, right? This stuff is cheaper than the olive oil, tastes almost as good, just as almost the same. That's what our taste testers are telling us, or our smell testers. Let's go ahead and pour it in, uh, mix up the fragrance, pour it out, and reform or send it off. That is a reformulation. The formula has changed. That's the basis of a reformula. Maybe instead of just swapping it out with a completely different ingredient, maybe instead what they do is they say, okay, instead of one part, one part, let's say one part, three quarters part instead mix it up, send it out, and send it along. That is a reformulation. Uh, the formula has changed in some way, and that is the difference uh, between a reformulation and a batch uh, change or batch number. Now, when we start talking about flankers, flankers are slightly different. Flankers are treated just, just a little bit differently, only that a flanker can almost be interchanged with a reformulation, uh, but flankers 
uh, are, I guess you could say, just a little bit more obviously different fragrances. So they may change a number of different uh, notes and ingredients within the item, uh, and it becomes a flanker. Some companies literally just change one note or just kind of mess with a whole bunch of the ingredients and the levels and basically say, hey, here's a different flanker. Some companies barely change anything. A flanker definition is really dependent on the company. So that this is probably the most fluid definition that you're ever going to get for a flanker. Um, it's a little bit harder to classify a flanker, but that essentially is the difference between the three. A batch uh, is essentially the same mixture. It's just occurring at a different time. It might have, you know, a the exact same you know ingredient but it might be coming from a different batch of ingredient if you will uh, whereas a reformulation is a specific or abject change with the actual formula in some way shape or another right uh, but in the in those two cases they're both still regarded as the same fragrance all right guys with all that out of the way let's just go ahead and dive into parfums vintage and specifically their pineapple vintage fragrance now, Pineapple Vintage, for those of you who don't know, is actually a clone of Aventus from the House of Creed. Now, it's a, it's a decent clone. I, it's, I don't think it's the best clone that's out there, but it is a decent clone. And, um, you know, I have nothing wrong with the actual clone or the aspect of it, you know, by itself. Nothing wrong with it. The problem that I have is the quote-unquote uh, flankers or, you know, different releases for Pineapple Vintage that they keep releasing and pushing out. Specifically like the King, the Pineapple Vintage Intense, uh, the Vanilla One, the... All of these fragrances are essentially Pineapple Vintage, but with little twists on them, right? So like the Vanilla One, there's... They amped up the vanilla just a little bit, right? Or uh, with like the King One, they were... It was meant to, uh, you know, kind of clone a specific batch of the Aventus or, you know, the Aventus fragrance. So a lot of their different flankers, if you will, are clones of the batches of Aventus, if that makes any sense, right? So Aventus had, you know, let's just say 16 different batches. They're attempting to release as different fragrances, different clones for each of those batches, right? On its face value, I can understand that. However, I still don't respect it for the simple fact that those batches don't constitute as new fragrances themselves. Batch variations, batch differences are a natural thing that happen in fragrances. There's a very specific reason why I have never gotten into the whole batch craze that Aventus has done, because it's there for every single fragrance. Every single, even including Creed fragrances, there are always batch variations. Some are a little bit more extreme than others. But there are, if you are going to release a fragrance at different times and you don't concoct it all at the same time, then there are going to be batches and batches variations specifically. So I've never bought into the whole Aventus, you know, kind of, oh, you've got this batch, you've got that batch. I don't care, right? Uh, I get that they do smell slightly different, but again, all fragrances smell slightly different uh, when you're concerning their batch variations. So I don't think it's worth kind of going over. So when a company takes what is a batch and markets it as a new fragrance, I don't agree with it. It smells too similar to the old fragrance for me to say and honestly tell somebody, hey, go out and buy the King version rather than the Pineapple Vintage or go out and buy the Vanilla versions ra rather than blah, 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 because they're, they're just uh, they're just batch variations. That's it. They don't smell different enough. And when I smell them, that's exactly what's reflected. There is a slight difference maybe in the beginning and then all of a sudden they smell just like the other pineapple vintages. And if they are smelling so close to each other, there is no way that I can tell somebody, hey, go buy this fragrance rather than, uh, you know, the other one that you have, right? Because this is a slight variation. The other. No, that doesn't make any sense. And then let, that's, that's just, you know, the baseline. What happens when you start looking at uh, the batch variations on batch variations? What do I mean by that? Okay. We've got our, you know, uh, Pineapple Vintage King or whatever you're calling it. Um, unless you concoct it all at the same time, you're going to have variations on that King. You're going to go back, you're going to mix it back up again, and you're going to ship it back out. And guess what? That King is going to smell different than the first King that you have. So what? You have batch variations on batch variations. And then oh, what are you going to do? Start trying to market that as a new fragrance as well and sell it to people? So no, I don't agree with... 
uh, creating essentially a, a clone off of batch variations uh, of another fragrance. I think it's very misleading. I think it's a technique that is, uh, you know, used to essentially get more money. Now, uh, you know, you may disagree with me. I get it, but that's the way that I view these fragrances and the way that I view these things. Again, nothing against Parfums Vintage, but this is not something that I can jump on board. And the reason that I feel so strongly about it is I would hate to see fragrance companies start doing that because it's something that you can easily be done and companies all of a sudden just start saying, oh, is that all we have to do? We just have to go ahead and slightly take our batch variations, market it as a new fragrance, and hey, that's the new fragrance now, right? So it's not something that I want ever to stick within the fragrance community and go on because as consumers, we'll suffer in the long run for it. For the short term, it may seem like, hey, yeah, this is such a great idea, but in the long run, it's a terrible idea and it's gonna hurt us, uh, you know, as far as lovers of fragrances, if you will. So that's essentially why I feel the way that I do. Sorry that was so long-winded, but I felt the need to really explain myself uh, and go through. So I don't have any hate for Parfum Vintage. Again, kudos to them. They keep sending me fragrances and I keep giving them my honest opinion of it. Some of their fragrances are great. Some of them, not so great. That's what I feel, all right? Thank you guys. Let me know what your thoughts are on this particular matter. At least down below. I'm always happy to hear good or ill, whatever it may be, all right? Thanks guys. Take care of yourselves and you guys have a great day.